Hi everyone, this is Todd. I'm one of the instructors at the English Language Institute at Pace University in New York. And I wanted to give you a, a mini lesson about close reading today. Uh, and close reading is about digging a, a bit deeper into a text as you're trying to understand uh, a text a bit more. And one of the more interesting aspects I think of learning any language as we become more advanced is when we get to go deeper and, and try to gain a fuller understanding of a text based on our own informed opinions. And this looks at things like the denotative meaning versus the connotative meaning. If you're not familiar, the denotative meaning is more of the literal meaning, sort of surface level meaning, versus the connotative meaning is more of the interpretive meaning or maybe the metaphorical meaning in some ways. Uh, kind of going um, again a bit deeper or looking behind the curtain sometimes we say. And so just a couple quick tips for how to do a close reading itself. Well, close reading is really about actively reading. It's about trusting your intuitions. It's about entering the conversation with a text. And by that, I mean asking questions, challenging assumptions, making different possible interpretations of words and expressions that you're seeing, looking for patterns and even literary devices, even if for business students, uh, I'll have my business students look at the literary devices in business texts, looking for tone, for imagery, metaphor, symbolism, those sorts of things. It's also important with close reading to look beyond the text, look outside to the wider context and look more macro rather than only micro kind of level and look at when a text was written, how it was written, those sort of things. Also, it's important to be able to play the devil's advocate, as we sometimes say in English as well, is sort of look at perspectives that are different from your own and be willing to keep an open mind when you're looking at a text and trying to interpret it and be willing to take risks and make mistakes as you're developing your informed opinion. And so uh, I wanted to just show you a very brief example, a very quick example of what I'm talking about here. And, and I know this, I want to keep this relatively short, but if I can share my screen and show you uh, a poem, a very famous poem uh, written by Robert Frost called The Road Not Taken. Now, The Road Not Taken, again, written in 1916, relatively, again, brief poem. It's a very influential, very popular poem, but it's one that's, that's good for interpretation to give you a bit of an idea. Now, you see here that I've highlighted a few words. So we're only going to look at this first stanza, this first paragraph, really, of the poem. Try to see if we can look at sort of the, the surface level meaning and go a little bit deeper. Well, we see here this first line where it's two roads diverged in a yellow wood. Even from this line, we can get a number of different possible meanings. Well, if wood were, were understanding to mean forest, we sort of see that this person, maybe Robert Frost himself, is walking through a forest and he's presented with a branching you know, fork in the road or a path, two paths if he's hiking or something, and they're diverging, they're, they're splitting off in a yellow wood. Well, yellow could mean a number of different things. Yellow could be that it's autumn, the leaves are changing, so it's fall time. It could also mean, well, if Robert Frost is, if we look at the wider context here a little bit, it could be that Robert Frost is maybe, uh, you know, in his middle age, and he was in his 40s when he wrote this. Um, it could be that, again, yellow can mean a number of different things, like hesitation or caution or warning, like a stoplight, right? And all of that. So there's a number of different interpretations, even from just a few words here. If we move on, we can see that he's sorry that he could not travel both. Why would he be sorry? Why is there this regret here? Why is he hesitating? And all of that. So that might be another thing we can think about and ask questions. Why is he sorry? Be one traveler long I stood, the next line. One traveler could mean that, okay, he's alone in the forest, but it could also mean that he's alone in making a big decision. You know, there's two choices that he's faced with, and he's just one person trying to make a big life decision. Maybe this is also about all of us having to make big decisions in our life. Some of these decisions, many of these decisions we make on our own. Long I stood could be the hesitation, once again, that he's really trying to consider and maybe make the right decision, doesn't want to get it wrong kind of thing. In economics, we talk about this in terms of opportunity cost, right? So it's, you know, what are we giving up if we make one decision over another kind of thing? Look down one as far as I could, the next line, and to where it bent in the undergrowth. This seems to be not just the literal interpretation, looking to see where the trails go and all of that, but more about also, uh, you know, the future. How can we anticipate what will happen in the future if we make a big decision? You might be able to think a year or two, you know, ahead, but at some point there's a limit to how far we can see, how far we can think. Kind of like in chess, if you've ever played, you know, where you're trying to anticipate the moves in advance and all of that. Now, if we take this one step further, maybe this is also, if we look at the year 1916, well, 1916 was the year uh, before the United States entered World War I. So maybe this 
it's possible our own informed opinion maybe this interpretation could tell us that uh maybe the us is at a crossroads and has to make a big decision should it enter world war one should it enter this more globalized era or not maybe the world is also at a crossroads here if we take it even further than that uh, you know, the, the world is moving from a more traditional kind of way to a more globalized, urbanized, industrial sort of system. And so maybe this poem could be about that. Now, all of these are just our own interpretation, but they're all possibilities that we could think of. Um, and this is just a very, very brief introduction and example. You see, we could do this for the whole poem. We could look at the rhyme scheme and see that there's, for instance, similar kinds of patterns here where there's A, B, A, A, B, where there's maybe a hesitation with two A's here. There's only two choices. I mean, you get the idea. There's, there's a lot that we can do to interpret even just a very small sample of text. And so I encourage you to, to dig a bit deeper. And, and in our classes, we, we tend to go a bit deeper in some of this interpretation, whether it's business communication or just communication uh, skills in different areas. Um, so just to keep this, this short, I wanted to say thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Todd from the English Language Institute at Pace in New York. Uh, any questions that you have or comments, please feel free. And you can learn more about our English programs by visiting pace.edu backslash ELI or sending a message to ELI at pace.edu. Thank you very much.